right. Okay, you have seen now his troubleshooting key that uh, that uh, Joe has come up with. There is the the key, and we're going to use it. And what now? People have come back and said, "Well, uh, much of his material." doesn't really make sense for today and what we're getting from the uh, dawah team and from the muslims we're saying that, uh, that they're throwing at us the all these what seems to be uh, uh, sectarian views of jesus and his christology and of, of the authority of scripture and all and all this material that doesn't represent us and it's frustrating because we don't know how to respond to that now what joe's going to do and this is what i like joe's going to say listen much of the, what the Dawa team is throwing at you and what Muslims are throwing at you, those who are on the street and engaging with them, are views from the Quran, lifted from the Quran, uh, that are, they think we believe, we know we don't believe these, but they don't realize the reason that they're in the Quran is because these were actual controversies that existed in the 7th century. Not in the 9th and 10th century, and certainly not even today. We don't believe in any of these. Not us, those of us who are Trinitarian Christians. No, we don't believe in these these uh, controversies. But they did exist in the 7th century. And that's why, as what Joe's going to do with this troubleshooting key, he's going to show you that in almost every one of these verses, you will see controversies concerning the, well, controversies concerning the 7th century milieu in that environment, in that place. So, Joe, you're here, aren't you? I, I see you over there. I'm okay, here. I'm here. I mean, you've got a whole slew of these verses. In fact, you could say you could almost look at any verse and show that these really do take us back to the 7th century. Not the 21st century, but the 7th century. Not seventh even the 9th and 10th century, but the 7th century. Right. So, let's That's do right. that. Can you give us some of the categories? Show us what you're really talking about. All right. Unpack it and give us the... Well, actually, what I'll ask you to do is you can you do it by categories like a, the, those verses that are confronting Scripture, those verses that are confronting Jesus' Christology, those verses yes. that, are, that are confronting the different theological positions that we, that we hear Muslims throwing at us today. But when you look at the Quran, actually, by using your key, you can actually take them back and say, yes, that contrast verse did exist by these people at that place in that time let's see if you can help us with that okay no problem let me just share my screen then so so we looked at the key and um uh, there are these 12 steps that you should follow to try and uh, uh re rewind time <laughs> to, to to reverse uh the effects of abbasid uh, religion, re Abbasid agenda, and to try and get back to what might have been being said in the seventh century. And so now let's look at some verses that the Dawah teams might throw at you and how with these 12 steps you can um, reverse the Abbasid uh, agenda and respond to the Dawah teams uh, consistently with what the verse actually meant in the seventh century context using against them what they might have thought was their strength before they met you with your key. So let's have a look at it. So first of all, there's some, if they say, it, well, all you're doing is just presenting things from a biblical point of view. This is not anything which is uh, from the opposite Quran. You've got these verses to look at first. Um, just to remind them that um, Surah 3, verse 84, Surah 4, verse 136, and Surah 5, 68, Tell them very clearly and unequivocally to believe in the Bible. Uh, and if they're not doing that, then obviously they don't believe in the Quran. But let's move on to the next step. Um, so these uh, passages here, which I've got just listed here, there's quite a lot of them. This, these are all the passages against adoptionism. Adoptionism is on point. I think it's you'll get to it by point five. Is that point five or six? No, adoptionism, uh, the one that you have here, I'm just it's number seven. Seven. So um, these are verses which are all anti-adoptionism. Um, most of the verses you'll be familiar with telling you that um, God has no son, for example. Um, these are um, Surah 19, verse 35, 23, 91, 17, uh, 111, 25, 2, 39, 4, 2, 116, 10, 68, 18, 4. The word it uses again and again, uh, if you look at the word for word, is itihad which is this um, um, uh, to adopt, to take on, to, to, to merge with. So it's saying that there is no adoptionism, that these, he's saying God doesn't have to, God the Father doesn't have to adopt a son. 
uh, everything is his anyway. He doesn't have to adopt anything. Um, and it also comes in those verses and says again and then, when he um, needs something to be, it, he just says be and it is. And that's a really important uh, verse. Kun for your kun, be and it is. And I want you to keep that in mind because whenever it criticizes uh, uh, adoptionism, it often brings back um, this point that he, he simply says it to be and it is. And uh, we're going to look at the verse from the Dome of the Rock one day. And you're going to see how important that verse really is. Okay, so um, those are the verses which are anti-adoptionism. We'll get into those. Um, then it has, these verses are about the tripartite Christology. Now, as I said, that these days, the, uh, maybe the view amongst uh, uh, modern Western Christians these days is, is, is not very familiar with the idea of Jesus being the uh, spirit uh, of God, the word of God, and, the, and the, the, the angelic messenger of God in the, in the theophanies as he appeared in the Old, Old Testament. It depends on how familiar you, you are with the Old Testament, how much you read your Bibles. But if you, if you do read it a lot and you're, you're familiar with the, uh, the, the theophanies in the Old Testament, you'll say, oh, yes, Jesus appeared as those, those three ways are the ways that Messiah appeared before um, he was born of Mary. And um, it was a very common thing in the seventh century. You've got plenty of icons with these uh, depicting Jesus as three beings. And these are the verses which uh, you'll see um, are, are really about uh, tripartite Christology. And there's even a verse, a whole chapter about the Annunciation there, but it's going to take a while to get into those. Um, okay, then these are the verses which are about crucifixion. You might have thought that some of these verses are saying there was no crucifixion. But in fact, when you use and apply this uh, method, you'll see that they are not actually saying that there was no crucifixion, but again, applying this tripartite Christology, that um, there, there, there was only one aspect of Jesus who wasn't crucified. That would be the, the, um, the body of Christ. Remember, he had this uh, last supper with his disciples and he said he gave them his body. He said, this is my body, which I've given up for you. And then he got arrested and then he got crucified. So the whoever it is that's written this Quran has taken this very literally and understood, well, his body then, his true body wasn't actually on the cross, but was with his disciples. And it was actually his appearance which was crucified. And you've heard people telling you that it was his appearance being crucified, but they've told you that that, that appearance was somebody else like Judas or somebody else was crucified in his place. But again, when you look at these verses, you'll see that actually that's not what it's saying. It's literally saying his appearance was crucified. That's verse chapter four, verse 157. But even more, it repeatedly mentions the crucifixion again and again. So it's not just one verse which talks about the crucifixion. There are plenty of places which talk about him, his death and his resurrection and the crucifixion. So those are some examples which you might want to look at. Um, then these uh, verses are about this Nicene system. If you remember, I'll just bring that image back again. So here is the primitive Nicene system of uh, monophysite uh, Christology which is uh, to be contrasted with a standard Roman uh, diophysite uh, Christology. This is the Roman Christian Trinity. And this is a, like a, a very primitive Nicene system of Trinity. It's basically just the top three uh, are being used. The Holy Spirit has been merged with God. So there's like, there's no need to have this Holy Spirit as a separate branch. They just kind of merge God and the Holy Spirit into one thing here. And so it's like just the, the top part of the, uh, the, the the Roman Trinity is the is the very primitive Nicene Trinity, which is used by monophysite Christians. And this primitive Nicene system is what you find in the Quran. And so these verses are all about the uh, uh, that that sort of trim, primitive Nicene system. It, it's not it's not against the word al thaluth. It's against tritheism. Um, it's uh, those are verses which are against tritheism. It's against Coloridianism. It's got even modern Mormonism would be sort of thought about thought against, but modern Mormonism is a kind of Coloridianism anyway. Um, and it's also got uh, as, um, passages about the, the Holy Spirit. There are even passages down here. There are some passages which you might have heard and thought were about uh, boys in paradise. Um, and in fact, when you do this system, you apply this system to the, those verses, suddenly they're not about um, boys in paradise. They're actually, those verses are actually about Jesus being with the, with the, with the believers in paradise. Um, you just have to apply this system. So, and then there's the father that, and the begetter and the begotten. So all these things are, are there. You even got um, a very interesting reference to Christmas 
in the Quran. Uh, there is actually a book you can get, which is called Christmas in the Quran, uh, by a, uh, somebody who was a friend of mine back uh, oh, a long time ago, more than 20 years ago. And um, I, I, I have to confess, I've never read that book, but I, I am aware from, from him way back then that, that Christmas was mentioned in the Quran. And it turned out he was correct. Um, the, is this the Ibn word... Warak? Yes, yes, ex exactly. So um, uh, he, uh, the, the word Eid, which uh, you'll know for is the name that they use for the Muslim holidays. The word Eid only appears one time in the entire Quran. And it <laughs> when it appears, it's actually in a reference to Christmas, nothing else. These are the verses about that. And that basically takes us through a lot of verses that we should really check and have a look at when we apply this uh, um, um, practice, this uh, system. Yeah. Just so just so um, this is good, because what you have done and you're applying and saying, listen, these are the categories. Now, you you came with six different categories. Interestingly, the ones that you have on your key here, the 11 and plus the 12, where they get in touch with you, but the 11 that you have here are all about really about the Godhead, uh, the Trinity, the God, Jesus, divinity, and the different category, the different, yes, really, um, um controversies that uh were rampant in the seventh century in that part of the world, yeah, but yeah. in your six that you went through here two of them well actually three of them are not really part of these 11 and i'm wondering why you've left them out one is which on one? the authority of scripture the one is on uh the the crucifixion which is not part of of these 11 and also on christmas which is not part of 11 i'm i'm, I'm assuming that you would subsume this. into those categories yes yes for the bible no, all of these be a little bit different one that would be a completely different category um well i'm sorry i didn't make clear all of these things uh become apparent when you apply this this system when you apply this troubleshooting key uh to verses in the, of the quran you get some wonderful surprises what you thought uh, might have been a, a verse against christianity at first or had nothing to do with christianity or might have been even a perverse verse in 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 the abbasid quran when you apply this system suddenly it's 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 like the the huris turning into grapes you know suddenly it's just a completely different uh, view, a completely different message, and consistently, again and again, very, very Christian. I mean, there are even references to Easter in, in this as well. So I haven't gone through all of the things which are referred to in, in, the, in the Quran, but um, when you apply this system, you start to see these things. These things emerge. The authority yeah. of Scripture emerges. Um, references to the Eucharist, I mean, again and again, comes through a lot. The Eucharist is exceedingly important. Whoever was writing this, uh, the Eucharist was, uh, was, was really a big thing for them. So um, uh, it's, 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 it's probably going to be more um, recognizable to people who are familiar with the high church, uh, old traditional uh, Christian perspective rather than more modern uh, Christians. Um, but uh, it, but still uh, worth in, worth having a, a, a look at uh, and applying this uh, system to see what other treasures you'll find. You know, bear in mind that I haven't applied this to absolutely every single verse uh, in the Quran over the years. I've only done it in response to um, basically verses which have been thrown at me, and I found these wonderful treasures. So um, if uh, if you find something by applying this system, which is in, in you know. Um, even better than you know let, let me know and we can add it to the list there may be there may be categories which we haven't even thought about yet you know uh, we i have there there is the whole surah at tariq the, the 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 you know the surah at tariq it's about the crucifixion every single verse in that is about the crucifixion um then you've got the surah 73 which is about the annunciation which just doesn't look like it's about the annunciation at all until you apply this system and suddenly Wow, it's completely about the Annunciation. So, um, yeah, these are just things which emerge. A new one you've just brought up, which I hadn't thought about. Chapter 56, chapter 55, chapter 76, about these lads that are in paradise. Yeah. It's not lads or young men no. who are in paradise. It's Jesus with his disciples. It's not even plural, you know. When you look at the, the, the word in the, in the Rasm, you'll suddenly realize that there is no plural. The plural has been added in the Haraka to make it into a plural form. So... Um, and when you take away the plural, then it's basically saying the Walid will go amongst them in paradise. The Walid, one, one Walid. Well, who's the Walid? <laughs> you see? 
Yeah. yeah, yeah okay. Yeah. So th these are these are things we are going to do, and you've now put them into categories. You've given us six c primary categories. There are others that you're saying that will also show yeah. up. We're going to do this, and we're going to uh, in the next video, and we're going to look at chapter one twelve, where you're going to actually do an application of how we can unpack it, what we can find from it, and see what really the. Umayyad Hadith, we're really saying, what was the controversy there about the Godhead, about God as one, and about the difficulty with begetting and begotten. So that's coming up. There's the application. We're going to be doing others later on. But for now, these are the categories that you that you've put out there where, the, where this key will work. And hopefully, hopefully people will be able to come back and use it when they're engaging with Muslims. This could be a key that we could use then to help Muslims realize that much of their Quran can really be traced right back to the 7th century. As we've been yeah. sifting through, you're, this is another sifting. You're putting the Quran in and you're going back and say, oh, let's look what comes out. What really comes out are all these controversies. These are all, this is a, this makes sense in the 7th century. It probably doesn't make sense in the 12th and the 21st century. And that may be why many Muslims are confusing. Right. What they're throwing at us thank you so much joe let's see if people agree uh do write your comments all right this is jay and joe over and out mm -hmm.